Uh, um, there was uh, a shooting overnight before we get to our first guest involving state police. Uh, the state police uh, are hospitalized, but in stable condition, as I understand it. And the uh, the person involved in the shooting, they were serving a warrant. Uh, that person is, uh, I think the word was neutralized. Uh, that person is dead, as I understand it. I got this from Sheriff uh, Nate Harmon. Two troopers serving a warrant late last night were engaged by the suspect. Gunfire was exchanged by the troopers, and the threat was subsequently neutralized. One trooper sustained gunshot wounds to the shoulder and thigh, while the other sustained a gunshot wound to the abdomen. Uh, The deputies secured the scene near Berkeley Station Road. We subsequently called out additional deputies from the Berkeley County Sheriff's Department for calls for a community while the state police addressed the situation. And uh, myself and the Berkeley County Sheriff's Department are deeply saddened by the injuries sustained by the situation and pray for the injured troopers, their families, and the West Virginia State Police as they navigate this unfortunate situation. We're here for you. Stay strong. Berkeley County, strong. That's from Sheriff Nate Harmon about the situation with the state police and the troopers in this warrant that was served over in the Berkeley Station Road area last night. And one trooper was uh, the most uh, injured one, was shot in the abdomen and had emergency surgery, but he's stable condition, I understand. Yes. So. Our guest in this segment is Larry Pack. He is running for treasurer. We've had uh, Larry on the program before. Good morning, Larry. How are you today, sir? Oh, I'm wonderful. How are you, How are you guys? Thank you. Well, you are doing, uh, doing well. We appreciate uh, you appearing on the program here today. And if you could, Larry, tell us a little bit about your decision to run for treasurer. Sure, sure. But before, before we do that, I would like to, again, uh, offer my uh, prayers, condolences uh, for the troopers that were shot last night. It is a uh, reminder about how dangerous uh, their jobs are, how dangerous the jobs are for our sheriffs and our, and our city police all around the uh, state of West Virginia. So uh, let's keep them in your prayers and keep really all, all first responders in our prayers. So Appreciate they, that. Uh, they never know. Who they're stopping they never know what door what's on the other side of that door and that, that was literally the situation here as it took place last night at approximately 10 50 p.m involving two west virginia state troopers uh larry let's let's talk a little bit about you now and uh, your sure. decision to run for treasure you certainly have a, a very impressive resume and a rich history in west virginia uh politics sir yes sir yes sir well i've spent um about 40 years in the in, in the private sector. Uh, the first uh, half of that as a CPA, representing um, hundreds, maybe thousands of West Virginians, West Virginia business, small businesses, uh, um, basically help them grow their businesses. Really, what a CPA is all about, uh, help them to uh, pay their pay their taxes. Um, and then the last 20 years, I spent uh, growing my own businesses, and uh, we sold that a couple of years ago. The last business was a was a healthcare business that provided care, uh, really throughout West Virginia and, and through parts parts of Ohio. Uh, so uh, once we uh, decided to move away from that, uh, looking for uh, something else to do, and public service. Uh, Seemed to be a really, really good fit. Uh, I spent uh, one uh, one term in the House of Delegates, which was a great, great learning experience, great opportunity. Loved uh, the hundred people that I uh, uh, served with. We didn't always agree, but we were all there for the right reasons, and so just a phenomenal opportunity there. And then again, once we sold it, I went down into the last year and a half. I've been um, working for Governor Justice as his uh, senior senior advisor. So. My wife and I spent a lot of, uh, I'd say, the first first six months of uh, of this year trying to decide what was next, and a lot of prayer and investigation and so forth. And we uh, uh, decided the treasure was a, was a good fit. Uh, my friend uh, and hopefully yours, Riley Moore, uh, who's been a wonderful treasurer these last four years, is moving on and running for Congress. I uh, watched his uh, progress and what he did. And uh, like to uh, to really just continue uh, the progress that Riley has, and probably put a lot more uh, put more emphasis on the financial situation as far as the state. I think Riley's done a phenomenal job, really a nationwide job, as far as making sure that West Virginia and states like like us don't invest um, in companies that work against our way of life. And so, anyway, I think Treasurer's a good fit with my CPA background, with my finance background. And I look forward to the to the opportunity to uh, introduce myself to West Virginians. Larry, the state appears to be on fairly firm financial footing. What is your diagnosis of the state's finances going forward, say, for the next five to ten years? 
Well, I think without a doubt that the, the progress that's been made over the last uh, uh, six, seven years uh, through the Justice Administration, through, through the, 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 the legislatures that we've had, it's just been nothing short of phenomenal. Uh, West Virginia is finally business friendly. It is you know, it's absolutely open for open for business. Um, so I, th- I think with having these relatively flat budgets for a number of years, I think it's really put us in a, in a good uh, in a good situation. We're starting to see just enormous growth uh, all through West Virginia, uh, the Eastern Panhandle. Um, uh, you know, I'm currently the uh, chairman of the Western Economic Development Authority, serving there uh, for the governor, and we're just getting calls every day from people that want to do business uh, in the Eastern Panhandle, and so we're very thankful for that, and that growth will will uh, ensure that the budget for the state of West Virginia will be uh, will be in uh, in good shape. Bill. Uh, good morning, Larry. Uh, good morning, sir. Congratulations on running for treasurer. But before that, I, I see that the governor has appointed you to be the Secretary of Revenue, uh, as Acting Secretary yes, of Revenue. Uh, David Harvey Hardy is going on to the judicial system as a uh, judge in the uh, 13th Judicial Circuit court so leaving the opening and the, uh, the governor appointed you speak to that if you would please well it's, it's an honor to um, serve uh, as the secretary of revenue I forgot the first day on job is is today uh, uh, but it's also a, it's a blessing to to follow my uh, my high school friend Dave Hardy uh, in that in that position so uh, Dave and I both graduated from East Bank High School just uh, just a few years ago and uh, so, uh, so that's pretty. Uh, it's interesting how how God works things out. But really, really uh, excited about that. Uh, most of those departments, uh, since they're, you know, revenue type things, uh, money type things, are things that I know about. Uh, you know, a big part of the Secretary of Revenue is putting the state's budgets together, uh, monitoring that budget, reporting reporting those results, uh, and at the same time, uh, running the tax office. And they, those are probably the biggest things that the the uh, Secretary of Revenue does. I know I've heard him say before is their their job is to collect the money and everybody else spends it. So uh, so I look forward to that. Um, but again, in my last year and a half, I've worked a lot with the governor and with Secretary Hardy, particularly in leading the efforts for the you know largest tax cut in uh, West Virginia history that uh, Governor Justice Shepard through uh, last year. Until the press announcement came out, I did not have a full appreciation of what the Department of Revenue did. I, I associate David Hardy being sitting beside the governor uh, during financial discussions. Uh, but the uh, Department of Revenue consists of a alcohol beverage control, a division of financial institution, state budget office, lottery commission, uh, municipal bond commission, uh, racing commission, state tax department. Uh, insurance commissioner's office and state athletic commission. That's that's quite a broad uh, uh, plate that you have in front of you. Yeah, it's, it's a large portfolio. It has a, there's about a thousand employees um, uh, under the the Department of Revenue, all of important positions. But um, so and again, we have really good uh, agency heads underneath there. Uh, but you know the things that are really important. In, in addition, what we talked to earlier is of course run run the lottery, the racing. Uh, but there's a lot going on there. But you know, probably one of the one of the one of the most striking things I've learned since I've been the senior advisor for the governor uh, uh, for the last year and a half is how large our government is, and how many things that we um, uh, how many things we're into. We we just have a really broad government. So most secretaries have about ten agencies under them. Not all of them do, but a lot of them do um and it's just a lot of different things that the state government has chosen to uh you know to regulate uh or to to operate and session will be beginning in early january uh which will be very much involved with the governor and the uh, legislators putting together the budget uh how how will you find time to introduce yourself to the electorate for the uh for the job of treasurer well it's gonna you know my, my priority for the for the next 60 days, really 75 days, will be uh, the legislative session and getting the governor's budget uh, passed through the through the legislature. I mean, that's just has to that has to be the priority. So uh, that's what we're going to focus on. We've been working on the budget for the last uh, probably 60. Not, we really worked on it all summer, but really intensely the last last 60 days. So that's going to be the priority to get through. 
Uh, it may be that um, uh, as far as running around West Virginia, that may have to wait until uh, sometime in February. But I'll get out as much as I can. I've got a, I've got a lot of energy. I like to I like to stay busy. So uh, so we'll uh, we'll get out and we'll get around the state. We've already uh, filmed our TV commercials. Uh, we've been making contacts, been raising money. So we've been doing a lot of work the last six months on the uh, um, on the campaign. But again, the priority has to be to uh, get the governor's agenda through this uh, legislative session and also work with the legislature and make sure they have the information they that they need in order to make the, the, the weighty decisions that will be before them. Now, you mentioned Riley Moore earlier, the current treasurer. Uh, do you anticipate to get Riley's uh, endorsement for your race? Yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, we work uh, really closely together. I uh, consider him a friend, and, and, and absolutely expect to uh, to have that when when the time the time is right. What and do I you, have endorsed him for his, his campaign yeah. uh, early on. I was one of his first contributors. Uh, and you obviously have great respect for Riley and the job he's done. Uh, if you are uh, are elected treasurer, do you see any anything different that you'd concentrate on, or you just be uh, kind of following what Riley set up? With respect to the to the to the campaign uh, against the woke companies, that is absolutely we're going to carry that on and, and try to broaden that out. Riley's got 19 states, I believe it is, signed up uh, under the under his leadership uh, that are fighting these companies. We'll continue that. We're going to fight that really really hard. With me having a CPA background, I I would expect to also focus a lot on economic development and focus a lot on the overall state budget. I think those things are really, really important. I think the Treasurer has a role in those those areas, and I know that I definitely have strong opinions on those areas. Larry Pack, our guest here, he is a candidate for Treasurer in the state. You've been in the legislature, so uh, you understand the workings of it uh, to an extent, of course. So what uh, will the relationship be between the Treasurer's office and the legislature with Larry Pack as a Treasurer? I think the, I think the relationship will be will be good. You know, there's there's always uh, uh, you know disagreements, and disagreements are just because we um, we have different positions and we have different um, uh, experiences in life. And so I'm a real I'm a small government person. I'm a big believer that when you try to do much, too much, you don't do it well. Uh, I think that uh, you know that we've done a good job in the last number of years. And this is as far as the legislature and this and the governor justice administration about about thinning out the budget, but I do think there should be some assessment as to whether we need to do all the things the state of West Virginia government is currently doing. I'm a I'm a fan of former uh, Governor Mitch Daniels in Indiana, and Mitch Daniels always said that if you can find it in the yellow pages or the white pages, the state of Indiana shouldn't be doing it. Maybe we should do uh, some of that research in West Virginia and just make sure that we should be doing everything that, that we've been charged to do. Riley has done a lot of work with the Hope Scholarship, and it is, oh, yeah. it is the hope of many people that the Hope Scholarship will uh, broaden a bit more as well. Larry, what would you like to see happen with that or any future developments with it if you're the treasurer? Well, um, I, I'm a big believer in education freedom. When I uh, was in the legislature, I voted for the Hope Scholarship legislation. I voted for the amendment that made it, made it wide open in, in 26 uh, for all students in West Virginia. Currently, is you know, you get basic kindergartners can come in, and then it's, and then that's really what you got got at this point. Plus, you can jump around, but but it gets wide open in 26. So so what the treasurer's office has to do is we have to be ready for the growth in the plan in the program. So so Raleigh and his administration has done a good job of, of getting it started, of bringing up I think there's about 6,000 students to take advantage of that currently. Uh, we're expecting a big increase in in, in 26. So uh, that's going to take up a lot of our time. It's going to take a lot of our energy, but it, but it's real, well worth it. Um, parents and children need education freedom in West Virginia. Uh, West Virginia has for too long had a one-size-fits-all program for most of everything. Uh, you know, everything's got to be done out of Charleston. This gets it back to the as local as you can get to people's homes and deciding what type of education that their children should get and the money, the money that the money should follow the children. So really excited about that. Looking forward to it. Um, and I'm really excited to find out how many parents in West Virginia take advantage of this when it's wide open. Um, so, um, um, like I say, I wish we could accelerate it. 
I'm not sure there's an appetite in the legislature to accelerate it, to, to move it up to 25, but I know there'll be some discussions about that in the next session. Larry, you mentioned a few a couple minutes ago about reducing government, and you quoted uh, Mitch Daniels. Uh, this is uh, that's thought or the statement has been used so much by candidates, but kind it's become kind of a throwaway statement. Uh, if you are elected, reducing government, how would you do that? What would be what approach would you take? Well, you know, I think the way, the way I like to say it is um, that. In West Virginia, we've done a really good job. The Republicans have done a really good job over the last 10 years of restraining the growth of government. And, of course, there's nothing any bigger as far as restraining the growth of government than passing the largest tax cut in history because, you know, if your government has the money, they'll find something to spend it on. It's just, you know, since time, that's the way it goes. But, but, but I think there also needs to be an assessment as to whether we can do something better, whether the private sector should be doing X or Y. For example, in, in West Virginia, we operate nursing homes. We operate hospitals in West Virginia. Uh, we operate uh, hotels and lodges. Uh, we operate insurance companies. Uh, there's a lot of things the state of West Virginia does that uh, I submit the state that the, that the uh, private sector could do better. So I'm not saying we actually need to do all that, but I think we need to assess it because that's the next step. You can keep your budgets flat for so long. And at some point, if you want, really want to shrink government, if you want to reduce the 30-some thousand people who work for West Virginia, put those folks in the private sector, you're going to have to restrict and reduce the things that the government does. Would, would that constitute a fairly extensive audit of each agency and see what can and cannot be more effectively done by the private sector? Yeah, I don't know if it's an audit, but it would be a really good conversation. Uh, because it, from my standpoint, I just, as I, in my last year and a half, and really my two years in the in the legislature, as I've learned that West Virginia does X or does Y, I just, I just keep making a list of things to eventually have a, you know, have a discussion about or have a talk about. Um, I do think that's the next step, step if we want a conservative and we want a smaller, smaller government, is just to reduce the things the state of West Virginia. Virginia does. But it's not it's just like our personal life, it's just like our business life, right? If we focus on the core things that we're supposed to do, we do a really good job on the core. But if we get too many things that we're working on, then we don't really do a good job at anything. And I think sometimes that's what happens in West Virginia is we're just trying to do too much. Um, again, all those programs were passed by Democrat legislators, you know, over eighty years, and maybe we need to slim slim some uh, reduce some of those. Do you have anything specifically in mind, uh, Larry? There's probably a lot that falls under that category, but is there any one burr under your saddle that you'd like to uh, to look at first? Well, the first thing we're looking at, we're working on now, would be in the healthcare realm. Uh, so the, the governor is uh, has charged us with uh, um, 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 moving to the private sector, uh, uh, the hospitals, and the nursing homes. So we're working on those now. So there's, four, there's basically uh, three hospitals and four, four nursing homes. So that's that's the, that's the start. That they actually run by the state now. Actually, run by the state of West Virginia. I, I, and I there's was, really good people. There's yeah. really good people working there, and they provide really good care. But with all the constraints of state government, they cannot keep up with the private sector. Yeah. Whether it's hiring, purchasing, new equipment, new facilities. Uh, state government with all the rigid requirements that state government has you just can't keep up i would assume i'm i was not aware of these four hospitals i would assume they're in the more rural section of the state and if they are will there be private sector interest in taking them over oh yes yeah no we the services will continue uh just uh, uh just not under state washington your flag no the governor is absolutely committed that the services will continue um i continue in those areas uh, just and not under the state of West Virginia's flag. Larry Pack, our guest here, he is candidate for treasurer in the state. Uh, Larry, in regards to the state's rainy day fund and how much larger that will grow, how much influence do you think the treasurer should have with the legislature in terms of capping that rainy day fund or investing it? Well, the, the, of course, the treasurer is responsible for for you know for investing investing the rainy day funds for, mm -hmm. for and it has a, has has a place in both the short term funds and the long term funds. So so as far as investments, the treasurer is there at the table, uh, working on those issues. As far as the size of the rainy day fund, 
Uh, I think in, in the total budget, that is something that the, the, uh, the treasurer definitely uh, has an impact, has a place uh, to, to talk about. Uh, and I'm a big believer that we, we need to have a strong rainy day fund. But when it gets to a size that, is, that really is more than we need to satisfy the bond uh, folks, then that, to me that's when we need to look at tax cuts. As, as you remember, the governor, um, in his proposal last year that we worked on, he wanted to bring the state income tax down to 50% and then work on reducing it totally. I'm a big believer in that. And, and so I think that to get to a certain extent, there's a certain point where this rainy day fund is more than the state needs. And at that point, we need to start sending the money back to, uh, back to our taxpayers who work really, really hard to pay their taxes. So the, the criteria you'd use would be to cover the bonds. Is that correct? Well, the bond rating agencies, they, they basically look at our financial position. We, we're real, they look at us really, really good. And it's just like um, – uh, and then there's a certain point where you have a billion two, which I think is basically what we have now, where that's enough. And we don't need a billion four. We don't need $2 billion. And so, so, so my proposal will be – and my, what I'll encourage folks to do is to look at reducing – our personal income tax, because I really do believe that is something that will bring people to West Virginia and bring people to West Virginia really strong and really quickly. Larry, any uh, final thoughts before we end our segment with you? I right, thank you for the opportunity. I uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I'm looking forward to getting out in the Panhandle more. Uh, again, we did business out there for a long time, so I'm very familiar with the area and a lot, a lot of folks. Uh, but also uh, ask everybody to keep our – Troopers in your prayers and, and uh, wish everybody a merry, merry Christmas. Thank you very much, Larry. We appreciate your time Take this care. morning. Thank you.